talk to me. Put your hands on your back and roll over. 
Hey, Bob, you're back. I'm not asking you. He's on the phone. Right. Yeah. Roll over. Roll over. Hey. Roll over. 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 Roll Okay, <laughs> shot. Uh, I mean, was the other police officers just standing there? Now at 10, serious questions after an investigation in the police shooting of a chase suspect. That suspect was killed after being shot at more than three dozen times. The shooting happened in Garland two weeks ago, but the internal investigation was released today. Just a short time ago, we learned the name of the officer who fired those shots. And tonight, we're hearing from the family of the man who killed, a family who is now demanding answers. It's an interview you'll see only on CBS 11 News. Here is Carol Cavazos. I just want what's right for Michael. Randy and Stephanie Allen of Wiley say their son Michael, who everyone called Mookie, didn't deserve to die in a barrage of bullets fired by one Garland police officer. I don't see anybody reacting like that normal 41 shots. I mean, was the other police officers just standing there? or I can't believe somebody didn't tackle him and say, stop, that's enough. Investigators say the Garland officer, identified with the first initial P and last name Tudor, chased Allen into a mesquite cul-de-sac August 31st. Michael was terrified of the police, first of all, and that's why he evaded arrest and he's done it before. Michael Allen had eluded Saxe police three days earlier. On August 31st, there were four to five officers at the scene. Officer Tudor was the only one who fired. The service weapon, like this one, contains a magazine carrying 15 bullets. Officer Tudor reloaded twice. The firing would have gone on for 30 to 45 seconds. I don't understand what kind of rage he had or hate he had, but to me it seems like he had that there was something else there that me and you don't know. Allen himself fired no shots that night. His parents say he had no weapon. He leaves behind a four-year-old daughter. Michael wasn't a bad person at all. He lit the room up when he walked in and everybody liked him. He worked with me. I was with him all the time. For an experienced shooter, that gun firing would be even quicker. We timed that shooting again just before we aired. It was 21 seconds. Now the Mesquite Police Department is continuing its criminal investigation. The Garland police officer is restricted from doing anything, any duties. And the Allen family of Wiley, they say neither department has called them to apologize. Live in Wiley, Carol Cavazos, CBS.
The supervision of Cleveland police has come into question following that controversial chase that left two people dead. But we want to know who's supervising the supervisors. Carl Monday goes undercover tonight investigating one officer we call Sergeant Stay at Home. 4th District Police Headquarters, the city's busiest police station on the east side in the heart of Cleveland's most crime-ridden neighborhood. So why is this police cruiser, in the middle of the day, parked in the driveway of a west side home in the second district, nearly nine miles away? What is the policy for officers leaving their district for uh, non-police matters? Uh, it's unacceptable conduct. I'm not allowed to do that without permission. But we caught 4th District Sergeant Dean Grazioli in the middle of the workday at his home near Fulton Avenue. Not just once, but on 14 different days. It was like watching a scene from The Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. Sergeant Grazioli starts work at 6 a.m., but only a few hours into his shift, he's on the road, making the crosstown trip to his home on Wichita Avenue, using a city car, the city's gas, and staying up to three hours on city time. He then drives back to the 4th District in the police vehicle, before returning home for the day in his personal SUV. We wanted to know what Sergeant Stay at Home was supposed to be doing on the days we caught him parked in his own drive. After we asked the Chief's Office for his duty logs, no surprise what happened next. The homesick sergeant started working a full day. Hey, Sarge, how you doing there? And arriving right. home in his personal vehicle. Good, good to see you uh, work a full day today. Yeah, how are you, sir? Where's your uh, patrol car today? We're used to seeing it in the driveway here. Uh, it's back at the district, sir. But Grazioli's disappearing act isn't something new. In this photo, from 2010, the sergeant isn't fighting crime. He's helping workers deliver new furniture to his home. We just don't understand is, you know, you, you work in the 4th District and your car's parked in the 2nd District at your house yes, sir. for hours on end. It doesn't make any sense to us. I understand what, where you're, what your reasoning is, sir, for being here. I understand it. Mm -hmm. What no one seems to understand is, how is Grazioli getting away with it, and for so long? His duty logs make no mention of the home visits. A couple of times, he did say he was stopping at the 2nd District Police Station. But here he is, at home, taking out the trash, while we're paying him to fight crime. I mean, what do you think taxpayers would say when they know that uh, you're police car sitting in the driveway here and this, we assume you're sitting inside for hours on end when you're supposed to be working. I understand sir and once again you know without uh, discussing with my superiors um, I wouldn't want to make any comments to you that uh, are in, you know in, inappropriate. Were the sergeant's superiors aware of his crosstown excursions? We went to the fourth to try and talk to the district commander. He said he was busy and sent his officer in charge to brush us off. That's what we're you trying to find out. to the public information officer, sir. That's my comment. So you have no comment? Before leaving, we left our number with the commander. He never called back. Leaving the question, are some cops getting special treatment? And certainly we'll never be given permission to leave their assigned areas uh, for a non-police related purpose. Safety Director Marty Flask says Graziola's home visits appear to be off limits. Is there any reason why an officer uh, would be allowed to leave their district and go home while on duty 
and you know then spend you know two or three hours at home uh, virtually every day. Absent a family emergency of some type, there's no justification for it. Many of Grazioli's duty logs show he was monitoring radio broadcasts to follow up on assignments. Was he monitoring the calls from the comforts of his home? We asked for copies of the 911 calls on days his cruiser was parked in his drive. We were trying to be fair to you. I don't want to. I'm trying yeah. to be fair to you too, yeah. Mr. Monday. Grazioli does have the department's permission to work off duty, including a job at the Horseshoe Casino. Could it be he was coming home to catch some Z's? I'd rather just hold my comments until my superiors um, are informed of my reasonings. The chief's office did send us a brief written statement. As a result of our probe, Internal Affairs has launched its own investigation into Sergeant Grazioli. If they find what we found... He'd be uh, potentially charged with dereliction of duty. You could be sure we'll stay on the case of Sergeant Stay at Home. Carl Monday, 19 Action News. What's your name, sir? Ah, what's your name? What's, what's, yeah, yeah, you, that was not appropriate. Ah, a Long Island man's hearty laugh is costing him some big bucks. He was fined hundreds of dollars for disturbing the peace. Eyewitness News reporter Tim Fleischer tells us this so-called noisy neighbor isn't paying up without a fight. <laughs> Infectious as it is, Robert Chiarelli's laugh has put him in a precarious place, at odds with his neighbor and in trouble for disturbing the peace. I can't laugh out a window in my own home. Robert, who lives with his mother Suzanne, has been, he says, at odds with his neighbor Donald Lohanian for several years. And so it's eyeballing me like I personally did something to him. So the only thing I could think of to do was laugh at him. The latest incident came last month when Robert says Mr. Ohanian was outside in his driveway wiping down his car. Robert standing here in the bathroom with the window open. Uh, he just stared at me and mocked me and just did stupid things. Robert then began laughing. <laughs> Soon after that, a Rockville Center police officer appeared. I'm sure someone in his house called the police, whether he personally did so, but it looked like a setup. He goes, just come down here right now and give me two uh, appearance tickets. Each one for disturbing the peace for that night and the previous night. On this day, police were back in the neighborhood, an officer telling us the Ohanians want no one to enter their property. Virginia Ohanian was quoted in a published report as saying, quote, the police did what they thought was best, end quote. Each one of these summonses carries a $250 fine or 15 days in jail. No longer a laughing matter, Robert and his attorney showed up here at Village Court, and they are now fighting this. I'm not going to be bullied or pushed around and told what to do. Reporting from Rockville Center, Tim Fleischer, Channel 7 Eyewitness News.
The Philadelphia judge is trying to decide tonight if former Lieutenant Jonathan Josie was justified when he hit a woman last September. The incident was caught on cell phone video during an after party following the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Josie, as you see, walked up to Ida Guzman and punched her in the face. Action News reporter Vernon Odom live at the Criminal Justice Center in Center City with more. And Vernon, there was quite a show of support for Josie in the courtroom, wasn't there? Monica, dozens of leather jacketed officers from the highway division where uh, Joe, Lieutenant Josie was once the uh, commander. They packed the courtroom along with family and friends to support him today. He took the stand in his own defense as he finally came face to face once again with the 40 year old woman from Chester that he allegedly brutalized. I hope he is convicted of simple assault. Philadelphia's DA, moments after the trial of former police Lieutenant Jonathan Josie ended with the judge promising a verdict in two weeks. Josie was tried today on assault charges following this late September knockdown of Aida Guzman at 5th and Lehigh following the annual Puerto Rican Day Parade. He was fired after 19 years on the force and a highly decorated career. On the witness stand today, Josie was near tears when telling the judge he saw a Guzman trying to knock a beer bottle out of her hand, not trying to hurt her. He said he and other officers were hit with beer from behind, and each time he turned to see who did it, he saw Guzman jumping up and down. He conceded he never saw her throw beer. As a result of her not putting the beer down, his actions were to try and knock the beer from her hand. Um, unfortunately, she was knocked to the ground. Guzman was arrested that day during the chaos. Charges were later dropped. One officer testified today he saw Guzman throw beer at police who were dealing with a reckless driver. On the stand today, Guzman admitted spraying silly string at the cops, but denied she ever threw beer at the police. I have a lot of comments now in my head from things that I witnessed today and things I heard, but I don't want to be accused of trying to influence the court while, they're, while the judge is actively deliberating. I did not think that his actions were uh, justified. I did not think he was defending himself or others. After two hours of testimony today, Judge Patrick Dugan said the arguments of both sides had considerable merit, and he's going to take two weeks to decide on his verdict. That'll be February the 26th. He scheduled a court hearing for that day. Live in Center City, Vernon Odom, Channel 6 Action News. All right, thank you, Vernon. Okay. No shots. No, sh no shots. Shots fired. Back off. Back off. Back off. Throw those feet from the house. Get down. Roscoe, anybody down? Got a medic. Medic up. Who's down? Note 11, a police officer finally punished for a shocking incident caught on camera three years ago. Surveillance video shows Rhode Island officer Edward Krawitz kicking a handcuffed woman in the head as she sat on a curb. She was waiting to be booked on a disorderly conduct charge. Krawitz was convicted of felony battery today. A judge gave him a 10-year suspended sentence with probation. He was also suspended without pay from the force. His lawyer called the sentence just. Thank you for joining us tonight. We have some answers explaining why police put an eight-year-old girl in handcuffs. Thanks for joining us. I'm Larry Connors. And I'm Sharon Reed. Steve Savard has the night off. As a last resort, we sometimes have to involve law enforcement. And that would be policy with eight-year-olds. 
The Alton School District and Alton Police answering News 4's questions tonight about why an eight-year-old girl was hauled out of school in cuffs. Matt says he's been on the story. Matt, I know you've been asking additional questions. What are you being told? Well, Larry, Sharon, I can tell you both police and the school board are not backing down on this. In fact, both say they believe that the police acted properly in restraining that eight-year-old special needs student at school and then bringing her here to the police station. And while they say incidents like this are rare, they do say this has happened before here. Now, tonight, Jamila's uncle says the little eight-year-old girl is just too afraid to go back to school. I will tell you in this particular instance it was absolutely necessary to protect that child by restraining that child. That's what Alton police are saying about what happened at Lovejoy Elementary School. Eight-year-old Jemiah Rickman had a tantrum that led school officials to call police. As a last resort we sometimes have to involve law enforcement. And that would be policy with eight-year-olds? Uh, they take students sometimes into protective custody when the parent refuses uh, to come and pick up the child. But Jemiah's uncle and guardian says he did tell school officials he was coming to pick up the girl. He says school officials likely grew impatient. They've restrained her before. They have? Absolutely. And how have they done it? Held her down. They have held her down on several occasions and I've come right to the school and picked her up. The police have done this? No. Teachers. Teachers. So the district is comfortable with police officers coming in and manhandling children. Uh, again, I'm not going to speak to no, the, is that the police part of the policy? Is that part of the policy? Uh, not in those terms, no. But Jemiah's uncle still wonders why the adults at school had to handcuff her. I feel like if, if you can't handle an eight-year-old without calling the police, to come and put fear in them like they've done my child. You don't need to work with kids. In all, Matt Sesney, News 4. No, I'm fine. Say that again? I'm fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. You live around here? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, where do you live? That's my business. Say it again? That's my business. No, I'm asking you a question right now because I believe you're videotaping and I believe you're audio recording. Oh, I am. Okay, you're not allowed to do that. That's against the law to audio record without my permission. You mean the wiretap statute? Yes. You mean the one where it says, um, surreptitiously? Step out of the vehicle, sir. The one where I can't do it surreptitiously? Do you know what surreptitious means? Sir, I'm going to ask you one more time to step out of the vehicle, okay? Um, I'd like to see a supervisor. No. Am I being detained? You're being detained right now because you're audio recording and you're not supposed to. Because of the wiretap statute? Sir, I'm going to ask you one more time to step out of the vehicle. Do you know the Maryland I'm versus... One more time to step out of the vehicle. Are you threatening me, sir? No, I'm not threatening you. I'm giving you a direct order. But it's not a lawful order. I haven't broken any laws, have I? Yes, you have broken a law. What? Like I told you. Do you know case law, sir? Sir, do you know case law? Step away from my vehicle, sir. Do not touch my vehicle, sir. Johnson? Is it yes, Johnson? That's, that's, that's Montgomery exactly County Police? And you're audio recording again? Yes. Okay, you're not allowed it's, to It's within recording. my legal rights. No, it's not. Do you know Graber versus Maryland? Do you know the case law that just got overturned in Maryland? He's audio recording. He's an audio recording you the whole time. He's not allowed to do that. Okay. Yes, I am. It's the wire. Can you look it up? You have a computer, right? Can you look up the specific statutes? I can attain your identity. 
You don't need that because I haven't broken any laws. At this point, it's a safety issue. Right. Can you step outside the vehicle? I haven't broken any laws, have I? It's a yes. safety issue. I just need to identify who you but are. But have I broken any laws? You're broken a law, by the way. You're not supposed That's to not true. That's not true. That Sir, is true. Can you please step out the vehicle? I'd like to see a supervisor. Sir, I'd can like you to see a supervisor. Step out the vehicle so that I can figure out your identity. You don't need to see that. What's your name? Sir, Dyer? Officer Dyer. Sir, can you please stop step touching my vehicle, please? That's unlawful. Sir, can you please step out the vehicle? I just need that. Unless I'm being le legally detained because you reasonably suspect me of a crime, okay. I do not have to provide identification. Okay. I'm not operating this motor vehicle. So under the transportation sir, title, you bring the I... case law, then you can bring it to court. Sir? No, sir, you're breaking the law. No, I'm not breaking the law. I want to see your supervisor. Get a supervisor down here, please. Yeah, go ahead. Get a sir, supervisor down here. Can you please open your door? Are you threatening me with? Sir, to, are you threatening to damage my property? Sir, I'm already giving you a direct door. order. You know it for a fact that you're not supposed to audio record. What That's not true. Sir, yes, it is true. That's not true. Okay, sir, well, you better read it again. Surreptitious. Sir, do you know what that means? Please open the door. One second. Just go ahead and just pop it. One second. I'm getting my identification. Open sir, the door. Please open the door. That's the point, man. And we want you to open the door. I'm getting my belongings. Hold on. Please open the door. I do not consent to any searches no, of my persons or property. Re whatever you're recording, you cannot on, touch my stuff, sir. sir. Get out the car. If you don't get out the At car, you point, will be arrested. I'm letting you know that now. Go ahead. I'm just putting your hands behind your back for you're my. You're breaking safety. the law. Nope. It's just for my safety. You're breaking the law. At this point, I don't know who you are. World Star! Oh, Joanna, I was just making sure that was you, boo boo, because bitches <laughs> must get fucked up. Fuck yeah, I'm on. Gio! Stop filming, I, man. Did I know wrong. it's not against the law. It's illegal to film a Yeah, I know. Listen. I did nothing wrong. And we will be making fun of the police about you. Please Come here. Do, please yeah. do. I did nothing wrong. Video. I did nothing we just saw you whack I his head against wrong. the ground. His blood is on the ground because of you. And then you I punched him. Wrong. You're a piece of shit. I did not help you. Make sure you get his head. I didn't even know this guy and I just saw what he did. Sorry to be good, all right? I understand you're not helping you. Okay, we're just trying to move everyone on. We're working what's happening here. He might be released. Yeah, but he won't be punished because you'll have internal inquests. Nothing will happen to the police officer just slam that guy's head against the ground. <laughs> oh, I know it's not against the law. Me, it's not against the law. Good. It's not Good. against the law. Well, I don't have to. Good. Well, what do you what do you mean? What are you filming for? Because I'm allowed to. No, you're not. I'm a me a media. I'm allowed to film. What law is there against me filming this? Please. Stop filming. Man. Why? Because I said. Yeah, I know you said, but what law? No, but what? I'm fine. 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 I'm Yeah, I did. I did. I said it all. Guys, ask me now, just to move away yeah, with the no, You I can mean, film, but from over there. Hey, one sec. Alright? Enough's enough. Okay, no. I'm not doing anything. Oh, that's no problem. Just move over there for me. For your safety and mine. Just back oh, yeah, there with the crowd.
Yeah. You too, man. Move down back there, please. I need to forget Matt because he met, that's just wrong. How they troll on him. They just slammed his head into the spot all over the ground. Did you get the photo? Make sure, do you know him? Do you know no, him? I've got no idea who this guy is. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Do you know that guy? No, I don't know him at all. I just saw the police attack him, so that's why but I started filming. How can we trust the police force when that's the sort of shit they do in front of hundreds of people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to know what your Facebook name is so that I can get you. Like, I've got a video of it as well. What's his name? Jamie Jackson. Okay. I'll find okay. Okay. Yeah, look at his head. Look at his head. Look at his head. Look at his head. This is ridiculous. Four, yeah. five, Can you tell me like what happened, what you saw? Six cops, one little guy. They should be saving us. Yeah, no, yeah. Can you tell me what happened? This one here, smashed him, grabbed him by the throat, and smashed his skull on the pavement. Yeah, no, I will, I will. Leave the mic and do it behind the back. Not right, not good. Just make sure you get their badge numbers because they're all involved.